Okay, in this section we're going to have a look at doing manual exposure on uh, the Canon 650D. This is for uh, movie mode or video mode. Now it's almost the same as setting a manual exposure for photographic mode. There is one exception, um, or one slight difference, which is to do with the shutter speed. There's a, a separate shutter speed rule to get the best look in your uh, video in manual mode. Um, and I'm also going to show you a very useful tip um, which will make give you that allow you to do that cinematographic or cinematic type of shallow depth of field look. You'll see now, maybe in the shot even here, that I'm in focus, but the area behind me is out of focus. So I'll show you that trick now. You can uh, you can use when you're setting the uh, manual exposure on your um, Canon camera. And again, a big advantage of setting it manually, the exposure rather than letting it be automatic exposure, is you can set these type of uh, looks to suit the style of your uh, your film. So let's have a look at uh, setting the manual exposure now. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, movie mode on the 650D and that brings me into the live view screen and um, I'm actually in P mode now, so that's one of the automatic modes and although that's finding a correct exposure because it can do that for me automatically, I'll just press that there and record it that's not where you want to go, we want to try and master the manual side of uh, exposure here so that we can get the effects we want in our picture so I'm going to go now to manual mode, turn it to M there on the... And you see immediately I do that, we have what seems like a huge horrendous problem on our hands. So what we're going to do now is start changing the, the three main settings here at the bottom. The ISO, the aperture, so the ISO is here 1600, you can see the aperture is 3.2 and the uh, shutter speed is 1 400th of a second. Now with those three items we can actually change and get the correct exposure and, and by doing it manually get the right um, effect we want in this particular scene which actually I'd like to have a narrow depth of field cinematic type of effect. So the first thing to do is to look at the ISO and change that to a reasonable one. Um, make sure you haven't got it in uh, automatic. Um, you can either press the ISO button up here on top of the camera to come into the ISO setting press that again or you can just press now on the touch screen the 1600 there I'm going to use a touch screen here that bear in mind you can use the um, buttons on the top and the arrow keys to move back and forth so the arrow keys here can move you back and forth and equally I can drag this so I'm going to for outdoors in sunshine um, you want the lowest ISO possible so probably a hundred don't leave in auto ISO you've got no control over your um, pictures or films then so uh, possibly a hundred today um, because it is quite bright sunshine. You can also get away with 200 in outside uh, conditions. In When it gets uh, much darker, uh, cloudier or, or much overcast, possibly 400. And then above that, 800, 1600, um, those two, and even 400 even to an extent, for indoor shots where it's dark or in much darker or for um, evening shots or nighttime shots. And then you've also got these high ISOs here which generally not too recommended because you get a lot of uh, noise in them. But um, you can play around with them yourself, but they would basically be for very, very dark shots. You've got no other choice, effectively. So I'm going to set this because it's outdoor day. Um, I think I'm actually going to set it to um, an ISO of 200, for example, because that will give a, a good picture as well. It's not very, very bright sunlight. It's morning here and the sun is coming up. So I'm going to leave it at that ISO. And um, I'll just half press the shutter button there to come out of that screen. You can also press the little arrow in the top right to come out of it. So ISO is now set. Um, now the next thing you can see the exposure here, this shows you the exposure on your um, camera here and this meter, you, the aim is to get that little dot there, if I half press the shutter button, that little dot there right in the middle, so one, two and three are overexposed, three being a higher overexposure, one being um, a slightly less overexposure and then going the other way, uh, minus one, minus two, minus three, those are underexposed um, areas, so you want to try and get that little marker up to the middle there for what the camera regards as the correct exposure. So I've set the ISO, I mentioned there's two other options we've got to set. Now, uh, normally you would look immediately at the uh, aperture here to set the aperture and I'm going to um, do that in a minute because the aperture sets the depth of field and if I just press on the aperture button there you can see we can increase and decrease the aperture there very easily. So at the moment um, I think it sets about 3.2 or something and that's obviously not far off if I just press that they're a little bit over overexposed so I can actually bring that down a little bit so I can increase the increase it a little bit 
and you can see there 3.5 not quite enough I'll move it up to four half press the shutter button and there we've got we've got now what it says is a correct exposure and you can actually shoot like that I mean it's not it's not a huge problem um, but I'm going to show you the correct way to do it because there's one feature that's different from photography in photography this would be okay you set your aperture and you've um, um, you've got your ISO set and you've got a shutter speed which is a reasonable shutter speed for one four hundredth of a second however it, when you want to try to make a cinema style shooting um, there is a rule of cinema that um, sets the shutter speed for you so um, that shutter speed really is although it will work um, it'll make your action any action in the picture look a little bit little bit jerky uh, a little bit sort of uh, to um, too stuttered basically so what you can do is or what you should do what you recommend to do is change this according to a cinematic convention in that the shutter speed should be um, a figure equal to twice the frames per second so well, what, what, what about that what are the frames per second well to change or see what your frames per second you've uh, set if you go into the menu option here and we just go along to movie recording size now that's what you set really at the beginning of all your filming, what you want to be the end product you want. And what we want here is we want to have um, a full HD and we want this cinematic style, which is um, full HD is this option here, 24 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, that's 1080 full HD and it's 24 frames per second. So we know now it's 24 frames per second. So having got that, I'm going to go back into the, um, half press the shutter button, go back into the main live view screen. So given that the frames per second are 24, technically according to this cinematic rule, the shutter speed should be 1 48th, that's uh, or 48, 1 48th of a second, uh, 24 times 2 basically. So I'm going to try and change that now. And again, uh, bear in mind, I'll just show you here on this, so don't forget, you can also use the dial at the top to change the shutter speed. This is the conventional way of doing it if you're not using the touch screen. You don't have to press any other button, just that dial. So I'm going to go back into the touch screen here and I'm going to try and set it to... Now there isn't a 48, the nearest one is 50 and that's fine, that's near enough to, to make a good picture. So we've set now the ISO, we had what we thought was a good exposure. Um, unfortunately because of this cinematic rule we've now had to set the uh, shutter speed at a slow shutter speed, 1 50th of a second. And the problem with that is it overexposes the whole picture. There's it's, it's a slow um, shutter speed so it's allowing a lot of light to hit the uh, sensor all the time. So what we've got to do here now is change the aperture. We've got to narrow the amount of light coming in and to narrow the aperture you basically increase this number here which is called um, an f-stop number. So to increase that like eventually you would press the AV button and move the dial like this back and forth. However, with the touch screen you can actually just press that there if you want to and you can simply move the kind of ruler along there against the green dots you can see and I half press the shutter button there it's still too overexposed there it says so I'm going to reduce the aperture even more and that means narrowing it and that means increasing this number this f-stop number I'll check what that's like now a little bit underexposed there so I'm just going to Lock it down to f11 there and you see at f-stop 11 we now have a correct um, exposure there so we set now so we've, we've basically got a good iso it's going to have a minimum amount of uh, noise in it it's, it's good for these outdoor conditions and daylight um, we've got the correct uh, shutter speed for the cinematic convention as i mentioned and we've got um, an aperture there that gives us the nice um, uh, or the, the good exposure here on the whole shot so now that's fine and you can work like that and if that's the, what you want what an aperture f11 will do it'll give you a very um a well i'll show you what an aperture f11 will do it'll give you a very deep depth of field i.e everything will be pretty well in focus from the foreground all the way to the background however as i mentioned it'd be nice to get this cinema uh, cinematic look where you get a narrow depth of field where maybe kate would be in focus and all the arrow area behind will be out of focus so we'll have a look at setting that now. Now the way you would do that um, generally is to make sure that this number here is the smallest number possible, i.e. you're going to open up the aperture as wide as possible and that means bring it to its uh, widest point and on this particular lens it goes all the way to 1.8. 
So by reducing the number down there, you increase the aperture. And now, unfortunately, by doing that, you can see our picture is completely blown out, i.e. it's letting much to the aperture is extremely wide now, it's letting a huge amount of light in and it's just overexposing the picture. We've got the ISO set, we're not going to change that because that's the correct ISO. We have this shutter speed convention, as I mentioned, for cinema, which is setting it at uh, 50th of a second, should be 48th, but 50th of a second is fine. So that means that um, this now, we're stymied a little bit in that there's no other, doesn't seem to be any other way to deal with this. So what we, what we have to do here is use what's called a neutral density filter, or ND filter. Um, so these ND filters, I've got some cooed ones here, and if we look at how much it's overexposed, if I half press the shutter button here, you see it's way over, even three stops overexposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ND, I'm going to use an ND16 filter here, which will give me four stops of correction. What these ND filters, they're basically kind of a, a, a grey colour, and what they do is they reduce the amount of light coming into the camera, a bit like sunglasses I guess and they don't change the quality of the picture particularly, they just reduce the amount of light coming in. Now having done that, um, you can see there, it was way overexposed, probably about over five stops overexposed, so I've put one ND filter on, the uh, ND16, which has reduced the amount of light coming in there four times, but what I'm going to do is put on another one, because you can put these on, more than one of these on, and I've got here a ND4, Cood ND4 filter, the ND4 filter, which is going to give me two more stops to reduce the light coming in. So once I, so with that, you can see there, um, you've got pretty well a correct exposure. It's just slightly under. It doesn't matter. It's slightly under. Um, that's fine. And you can see there we've got the uh, shutter speed 50 of a second and aperture 1.8 and the ISO 200. So that's doing uh, manual exposure in video. Now, to be honest, if you don't have um, the, they're not expensive these uh, filters. But if you don't want to be using those immediately, or you want to practice this shallow depth field of uh, look in video, you can get away with um, not having uh, the, the cooled filters and just if I take those off now you can see we're back overexposed again so you could this cinematic rule of 50 what, 1 50th of a second or 1 48th of a second I mean you can cheat it a little bit in that if you're gonna if you want to um, increase the shutter speed to huge amounts like here you can see I mean, it's going to make your, any action look very jerky, but to be quite honest, um, you can get away with it. Obviously, if you're going to produce something that's very, very uh, professional looking, you're probably not going to want to do that. But I mean, some wedding f f uh, videographers will, will do this because they're using short clips of a, a wedding and there's not huge amounts of action in it. And um, again, you know, the effect is the same. Uh, so just discarding the cinematic rule a little bit, you can get away with it in certain circumstances. But generally that rule is that you set the um, shutter speed to, well, to twice the frames per second, which would be 1 48th of, um, of a second shutter speed. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful.